Penny stocks what are they? Our gain in net worth during 2005 was $5.6 billion which increased the per share book value of both our Class A and Class B stock by 6.4%. Over the last 41 years book value has grown from $19 to $59.377 a rate of 21.5% compounded annually. FASB merely requires that an enterprise shall display total comprehensive income and its components in a financial statement that is displayed with the same prominence as other financial statements that constitute a full set of financial statements. Unfortunately despite the lack of attention paid to it by investors the statement of changes in stockholders' equity is considered a financial statement that constitutes a full set of financial statements. Therefore comprehensive income can be reported in a statement many investors either do not review or do not understand. Alternatively a company may choose to report comprehensive income in a separate statement of comprehensive income. This of course baffles many investors who think they are reading a second copy of the income statement. After all what is comprehensive income? Isn't the net income number reported in an income statement a comprehensive number? The widely reported earnings per share number is not comprehensive. That isn't to say the EPS number isn't important. It is very important. In fact for certain businesses it may be the most useful figure for evaluating a going concern. This is especially true if the investor is only looking at the financials for a single year. A single year's comprehensive income may actually be less representative of a business performance than a single year's EPS number. Remember the earnings per share number does not tell you how much wealth was actually created. You need to look to the comprehensive income number to find that information. Essentially Buffett is reporting Berkshire's earnings in that opening line. He is simply using a more comprehensive income figure. He's saying here's how much wealth we created and here's how much capital it took to create that wealth. When he writes her gain in net worth during 2006 was $5.6 billion which increased the per share book value of both our Class A and Class B stock by 6.4%. He's really saying Berkshire earned $5.6 billion and a 6.4% return on equity. He prefers using comprehensive income rather than net income because comprehensive income includes non-operating earnings such as changes in the market value of available for sale securities. Of course there is no such grail. Neither net income nor comprehensive income captures the true economic changes to an owner's share of the business. There is no truly comprehensive income number, and there never will be. A review of the financial statements alone is not sufficient to determine how a business competitive position has improved over the course of the year. Every day in countless ways the competitive position of each of our businesses grows either weaker or stronger. If we are delighting customers eliminating unnecessary costs and improving our products and services we gain strength. But if we treat customers with indifference or tolerate bloat our businesses will wither. On a daily basis the effects of our actions are imperceptible cumulatively though their consequences are enormous. It is to these actions and their effects that an investor must look when he is forming his qualitative assessment of a business. After all a company may lose money and yet improve its competitive position. In fact it is exactly what a great many young businesses do. The question of course is whether those present losses will be more than offset by future gains after accounting for the opportunity costs incurred. All costs are opportunity costs. It makes no sense to evaluate a year's losses as if the alternative was to stop time. The available returns on the lost capital must be considered as well. That is why when one of Berkshire's units has consumed capital the loss has weighed heavily on Buffett. Over Berkshire's history the cost of any losses also included the over 20% of compound annual gain that was foregone. Buffett has always been painfully aware of the fact that for Berkshire losing $1.000 today would be much the same as losing over $7.000 10 years from today or over $125.000 25 years from today. Berkshire will no longer grow its per share book value at over 20% a year. So these particular figures are outdated. However if you refer to Buffett's thoughts at the time when the Buffalo News was losing money you will see just how heavily these opportunity costs weighed on him. Still it is possible that a business operating at a loss is actually improving its competitive position and creating wealth for its owners. One very difficult question that must be answered is exactly what the assets that have been gained at great expense are actually worth. In some very special businesses huge expenses are fully justified.